Hi everybody, in today's video we're going to get Godot 4.5, create a new project, set up the project settings, and input mapping so that we're ready to begin developing. Okay, everybody, so the first thing that you're going to need to do if you're new to Godot is obviously go and download it. And uh, I'm going to be running with the latest version 4.5, at least the latest as of the release of this video. So you're going to want to grab that. And let me just go ahead and show you the website. I'm just on the Godot homepage here, and you can see there's a download latest option. You can always just use that. Go ahead and go to the download latest, select your flavor. You know, I'm on Windows. You're probably going to be this x8664 if you're on Windows, and, and if not, you should hopefully know that. Otherwise, just download what you need, extract it, and then you're ready to go. And so for me, I've got the shortcut right here on the desktop just so I can show you. I'm just going to run Godot 4.5, and it's going to pop up this, this window here. Now, yours might be blank and empty, or you might have projects listed like me. And you can see I've got some various things in here. And what we're going to do, of course, today is we're going to create a new project. And so simply just come in here, create new project. We will give it a name that's appropriate to the project and choose where we want to save it. Now, in this case, I'm going to call it Metroidvania Forge. For some reason, it wants to save it in this documents. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to just browse here, and I'm just going to pick a spot on my PC where I'm going to save this. Okay, and then once you've found your folder, everything should be set up. Most computers nowadays are going to support this Forward Plus, which is going to be their, you know, kind of the more advanced rendering engine in Godot. And even though we're doing 2D game, we're still going to want to use that, that version of the engine if we can. If you can't, then you can always select compatibility, or that's probably pre-selected. And then it is good to go ahead and keep the version control metadata set to Git. That's the only option that should be in here by default. But um, make sure that that's selected because we will want to use a GitHub repository to keep it back up and save our project. And so once you're there, go ahead and say create. And Godot is going to create it and launch the project. Now, once we've created a project here in Godot, obviously it sets some things up. You can see the title is Metroidvania Forge. We're in the Godot engine. It drops in this default icon. We're looking at a 3D view because 3D scene is kind of maybe the, you know, the standard for games nowadays, but we're going to be working in 2D. So I think one of the first things we can do is let's just go ahead and create a new 2D scene by clicking on that. And that will cause this new scene to be 2D based. And now we just have this gray background and you can see kind of our horizontal and vertical axis here, as well as this indicator of the camera. And you can see that it says unsaved. I'm just going to go ahead and save it by pressing control S. And then I'm going to just call this file the playground because we're going to use this a lot throughout the project and we're going to just save it in the project root for now. Okay, so there you go. You can see that it saved the scene. Here it is. Um, you know, for reference, you could drop in the Godot icon. I'm not a fan of using the Godot icon for everything, but we'll use it in this first video. So now from here, you can run the project. There's a couple ways to do that. There are buttons up here that allow you to play or run the project. You can see that the shortcut is F5. There are also some other options to run the current scene or run a specific scene. And then this is the movie maker mode here. I'm going to go ahead and just use the shortcut F5. And because we've never run the project before and we haven't selected a default scene or main scene to run, we get this prompt and it's going to ask us, do you want to use the current scene? And we'll go ahead and say, yes, yeah, select current. And now every time we run the game, it's going to run the playground scene. Okay. And there we go. It's running. It looks just like that. We see the Godot icon. That's good. That's a good first step. Now, the next thing that I want to do is adjust some of the project settings, because really that's going to be the focus of this video is just getting this project set up to work in. So if I go to the project um, option here under the menu and go to the right here to project settings, then it'll pop up this project settings dialog. And I have advanced settings turned on, so yours may have looked like this, but you're going to want advanced settings on for the most part. You can see we've got a project name right here. We've got some localized options. We can add a description, some other things. We're not going to really do a whole lot with this particular screen right now. There is a spot for an icon. I'm going to go ahead and extend the first piece of homework right now, and that is for you to create your own icon. This is an SVG, but it can be a PNG or a JPEG, just an image that you're going to associate with your project. Anytime you open Godot and you're looking at your project list, it'll use this icon. Okay, so go ahead and take time to find one and just bring it into your folder here, and then you can add it to your project. But the, the next setting that we want to look at is going to be underneath display. So you can see here there's a window option. And we've got a viewport width and height. 
we've got a mode it's windowed or you can select like minimize maximize full screen exclusive full screen now there's a couple other options because we have advanced settings on see when i turn it off you can see that this page is fairly short and we can actually do most of what we want to do without the advanced settings here and so let's go ahead and do that down here under stretch this section right now the stretch is disabled and because we're making a 2d pixel art game how we handle these is going to be important now in the, the action RPG tutorial, I use the viewport setting, which means that if we have like a low resolution pixel art, which we did and we will in this one, um, then what it'll do is it'll kind of render your project at that size and then just scale it up to match. Now there's another way that we can handle this and that's with canvas items. And I wanna go with canvas items this game. It's a different approach. It has pros and cons, but it can work for pixel art. Okay, but what this will do is it'll allow us to have nice, smooth 2D, graphics on our screen and then we don't really need to set the scale mode or anything like that um, the fractional is all is fine for now and i'm going to go ahead and toggle on the advanced settings because what i want to do is i already know the resolution that i want my project to run at because i'm going for a low pixel art i'm going to set this viewport width and height to the height the width and height that i want my game to to kind of emulate so that's going to be 480 pixels wide and 270 pixels tall. Now you'll, you may notice that these are multiples or um, fractions of like a regular 1080p size. So if I were to multiply this by four, you'd see I'd get 1920. So essentially what that means is if you have a 1920 by 1080 monitor, when I reduce this down to this 480, there's gonna be essentially four pixels on your screen will make up one pixel. So it's gonna be chunky. It's gonna be like resumed in four times, right? I'm gonna go ahead and leave the mode and these other things. But the reason I want advanced turned on is because down here we have a window width and height override. And what this will do is it won't change the resolution that we're rendering our game to. And you may wanna pick a higher resolution for this, but these overrides will simply change the size of the window and it will scale up your, your viewport size to fit in that, okay? So when we have a small resolution like I've set, we can put a higher resolution on the override and it's gonna just zoom in, okay? So let's go ahead and I'm gonna put a resolution that will fit on my screen while I'm playing the game and demoing it throughout the tutorial series. So this is gonna stay pretty fixed for me. You may wanna put this at a higher resolution. So I'm gonna pick this 1440 by 810, okay, which is three times that size. And I'm gonna go ahead and close. And I just wanna demonstrate real quick what some of these uh, rendering modes will look like. You can see though, since I changed that, you see this little blue rectangle has changed. It's now smaller. It used to be pretty large and encompass this guy. So now it's saying, hey, this is kind of the size of your game. So if I run it just like this, we're not gonna see that Godot icon anymore, okay? It's off screen. So we can grab the icon, bring it in here. And of course, it's a lot larger on the screen than it was before, okay? Now, if I were to go back into my project settings real quick, and let's change this canvas items type to viewport, say close, and let's run again. You're gonna see that things look a little bit more pixelated, and that's because it is now rendering and forcing that lower resolution and then scaling it up. I'm gonna come back in here. I'm gonna turn, uh, I'm gonna turn my setting back to canvas items. And we'll have to talk about the implications of this later when we start building our game a little bit more. You can see it's a little bit smooth. That is kind of blurry, which doesn't look great, but don't worry, we're not gonna have anything that looks quite like that. Now, I will say right now, if you are going a slightly different path than me and you want high res HD pixel art, then what you're gonna to wanna to do for your settings and your project settings is you're probably gonna to wanna to just reset these, or I would even recommend picking like 1080p or 2K kind of resolution, okay? So if I put 1920 by 1080 and I run this again, then you are gonna see crisper edges and of course a much bigger screen on this guy, right? Okay, and so what that's gonna mean is you're gonna render your game with a higher resolution target in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and reset mine though because I do wanna keep this pixel art style. So uh, 480, oops, not one, not 180. 480 by 270. And that's gonna be how I set my resolution of my game. There we go. So make sure you get your setup, make sure you can run it and that everything works kind of like mine does. You guys are gonna be sick and tired of the project settings here. <laughs> Let's go back in. There's actually a couple other settings in here I'd like to set. And this next one has specifically to do with the textures and the default way that we treat textures in this project. So I'm gonna come in here and let's go down to, there's a section for rendering. Mm -hmm. Here it is, rendering. 
and then there's textures. And you can see that there's a default texture filter. Linear is fine if you're doing HD type of game. If we're doing a pixel art game, we want to select nearest, okay? Because what nearest will do, well, what, what linear does is it smooths the texture as you zoom in so that, you know, if you've got like textures on a model and you zoom in really close, it's going to try and smooth them and make them look as nice as possible, even though they're, you know, you're starting to get close to the really zoomed into the texture. But with nearest, it's going to keep those hard edges on our pixels. It's not going to try and smooth them out. So just by changing this setting, Let's go ahead and close this. You can see a difference in how this guy is rendering. You can see that the edges are a lot harder uh, than they were. And in fact, even when we tested before, they were probably getting smoothed a little bit. But uh, there we go. We've got nice hard textures. This is going to be really apparent when we bring in pixel art. Now, if you need to, you can always change this. And so that setting is reflected on the, uh, let's see, the texture here. So you see I've selected my icon and this canvas item has a texture section and the filter is set to inherit, we could set it to linear and you can see it starts to smooth it again. We could set it to, near, these mipmap ones are, are gonna be important for 3D mostly, but nearest, right, is what we're defaulting our project to. So you can see linear, it's trying to smooth it. Nearest, it's keeping the pixels as they are, okay? And of course, inherit will use that project setting. But uh, if you don't set that project setting to nearest and you're doing pixel art, then the default is linear. Everything's going to look muddy when you bring it in. And you're going to, you know, the alternative would be to come in here and manually set the texture type to everything. And that's the wrong way to do it, right? You just want the default to be set to whatever your default should be. One other thing that I want to set up now, and this is subject to change later, but I want to set up all of our input mapping so that when we're working with our game, we've already got controls defined and bound and, you know, we're ready to work with them so that we're not, you know, scrambling and saying, oh, shoot, I got to go set up a, a new input binding, you know, when we're implementing a feature or something like that. So when you go to project settings and you go to input map, you're gonna find that it's gonna look empty. We wanna define our own actions with our own names so that it's easy to work with, of course. And so the first thing that we're gonna want is we want our directions like left, right, up and down. So I'm just gonna make a new action called left, add it. Okay, and then what we can do in here is we can add an event that we want. And if you just press a button on a keyboard or let's say you've got your handy controller here, you know, I could push left on the D-pad and you can see that it's selected D-pad left up here. And additionally, you can add multiple events. So if I add again and push left on my keyboard, then that will work. And we could even go in here and add left on like the joystick, right? The, the thumb stick on, on my joypad. So go ahead and set up left, right, up and down doing the same thing. So we just set up those three so I could just create a new action for each of those. So like if I start with right and I'm going to add up and down. Okay, so go ahead and bind all those and then I'll show you how I bound mine. There we go. I've gone through and I've bound all of those. Now we also want to create some actions for the, the other you know, abilities in the game. Obviously these directions are just used for movement, but we're going to want to bind buttons for abilities like our jump, attack, a dash, and then I'll just call it an action button that we can use for other things. So I'm going to just start right now with the face buttons on here, okay? And I'm going to use an action for each of those. So I'll go ahead and create the actions, and you can bind these how you want, but I'm going to create them not right now with you. So we'll do jump, attack, dash, and action. Now these names are nice because when we're scripting in GD script, we're going to be able to reference these input actions by these names. Okay. Which makes the code really readable. So, you know, for right now, I'll just go through and, and let's start with uh, jump. I'm going to add, I'm going to use, I've got a, you know, this is a PlayStation controller, so that's cross or X. And I'm going to do the same for attack. I'm going to go square dash. I'm going to use circle. And action, I will use triangle. And then I'll just fast forward and show you. But the next thing for you to do is to choose equivalents for your keyboard. Or maybe you don't have a joypad, right? You're only doing this on your keyboard. So just add what you want those to be. And I'm going to mimic um, the Hollow Knight controls. So for jump, it's going to be Z. Attack will be X. My dash will be C. And then I'm going to have my action on S. All right, you can see I've bound my keyboard controls here. I added space, so there's a couple buttons that you can use for jump.
but all the inputs are bound, at least for all of our basic abilities that we're going to use when we start creating our player. And uh, we're ready to go. Now that we've got this set up, we're kind of ready to really begin playing around and working on our project. But I want to give you a homework assignment, and that is to create your own project icon. So, you know, make an image, take a screenshot, whatever you want to do, plop it in here, and then go into your project settings and assign it as the project icon. And I'm going to do the same for mine. And then in the next video, we're going to talk about setting up a GitHub repository so that you can back up and save the progress of your project. It not only is it handy for backup and project management purposes, but if you ever need to like share it with somebody and maybe have them look over your code, it's really nice to have a GitHub repo so that they can just grab the code, pull it down, take a look at the project. So thank you for following along. Go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section below. Maybe tell me what your project is going to be called. Maybe it's not called Metroidvania Forge, right? Maybe it's got a different name like, like Solid Knight or something like that. Okay, so go ahead and drop a comment. Subscribe to the channel so that you can see when my next videos are coming out. And as always, we'll see you next time.